OILF has a very broad definition of curriculum and um, it says that curriculum is the child's whole experience from the time they walk in the door till the time to the time they leave. And that combined with the breadth of the five learning outcomes um, is quite, quite revolutionary, I think, and can be quite revolutionary in early care and education services because what it means is that there's no one part of the day, there's no one type of activity that's more important than the other parts of the day or the other types of activities. It means, for example, if we think about children's social and emotional learning, that the ways children are greeted, the ways that they're helped to separate from their parents or carers, um, the ways that they're helped to resolve conflicts, the ways that, that lunch is organized are just as powerful um, in their potential for social and emotional learning as um, traditional so-called activities that educators might organize and offer in a fairly structured sort of way at, at particular times. So, so that broad definition of, of curriculum um, suggests that educators make a range of decisions about children's experience that have quite a direct impact on the social and emotional learning opportunities. Educators make decisions about things like how they're going to set up the physical environment, how many choices they're going to give children of, of, um, uh, of choices of things to engage with or um, experiences to participate in, um, how many group activities they're going to offer. Uh, too many group activities puts pressure on children maybe to cooperate more than they're capable of doing. They won't enjoy that. Okay, so they're learning, they're learning that it isn't fun to work with other people. Um, so there, there are lots of kinds of decisions that educators make that don't have to do directly with their relationships with children, um, but have to do with the way the curriculum plays out every day that impact very much, very directly on, um, on children's, on children's learning, learning opportunities. The Early Years Learning Framework highlights the role the environment plays in curriculum, an environment that promotes competence, independent exploration and learning through play supports children's mental health and well-being. Providing an environment for children which is rich and meaningful yeah. are is a way that early childhood educators can progress children's social and emotional development. It's worth looking at an early childhood service with that in mind as to actually go into a space and say, I wonder what here in this space supports children's social and emotional development. And if we think about it, it's the places where children can get, can be reminded of who they are. It's also about things within the room, uh, ex experiences or materials and resources that reflect who they are, that there is something in the room that reminds them of their connection perhaps with their family, so photo, uh, photos, I've seen many early childhood settings that take a significant amount of time and effort to gather together a group of photos which are often in frames for children to see which are photos of their family so there's a strong familiarity and connection with their home life. There's things around the room that remind them of who they are. Educators have many opportunities to support children's emotional and social learning, opportunities that are both planned and incidental. I guess the incidental ones are the sorts of conversations that uh, educators would have with children that pop up or crop up in the, in the course of the day and there will be many, many, many of those and I think the skilled educator is on the lookout for them. Is, is mindful, is tuned in to when those experiences occur. Intentional educators move into those and start to help to help children to understand what is happening, to uh, put the words to what's being experienced and to support children to hopefully as they get older navigate their way out of some of those more difficult encounters or join in with children as they sort them out. When we create opportunities for children to work in groups, um, helping them to small groups particularly, um, are really helpful when children can figure out 
how to read other people, how to figure out what to do next, how to take your turn, how to wait for somebody else, how to listen to somebody else. Things like, oh, I always think about Play-Doh, for example. When you have Play-Doh on a table with you know six chairs, it's often not about the Play-Doh that they're doing, that they're experiencing. Not, it's not necessarily a fine motor skill development, but watch the social connections, the way they talk to each other, the way they figure out who's got what amount of Play-Doh and figure out how they can get something from somebody else and how they watch other people doing something and how they talk to others. When an educator joins in there, they become a person who can help navigate the way that those connections work. Educators might need to do a bit of thinking about what does it mean to plan for a social and emotional experience? How can I plan for that? How can I actually, you know, document that if you like and I think partly the answer to that is to actually ask yourself that question a very specific and deliberate question about planning for children's emotional well-being planning for children's identity planning for children's social development